Hey Church, hope you're well. It's Wednesday the 27th of July. I'm up here at Westminster Woods on our summer mission project with the team from Faith working to help to restore uh, the camp here, um, prepare for the fall. This has been a sacred space for lots of people from, um, from all over, but particularly from Faith as well. We had our men's retreat here last month and so it's good to be here with uh, a team doing this good work. Uh, today's reading is from Luke 15 and to be honest as I uh, opened the chapter and looked at it it's such a familiar chapter that I, I, I go into it almost expecting to, to, to not be surprised by anything but I should know better God's Word always uh, sneaks up on us has something new to teach us and the thing that, that stuck out to me is is the initial question um, that prompts Jesus to tell these three parables about the lost sheep and the lost coin and the lost son. And it's this thing because Jesus is out and he's welcoming and eating with sinners, the kinds of people that the religious folks thought were not welcomed by God. And here's Jesus sitting down and, and, and having meals, having parties with the worst of the worst. And they begin to mutter against him. And it makes me, and I think it makes us as a church, have to face this question. Um, if Jesus is the kind of person that welcomes and eats with sinners, the worst of the worst, and we are following Jesus, then are we the kind of people, the kind of church, who welcomes and eats with sinners, the worst of the worst, into our fellowship? Um, to be honest, I think one of the strengths of, of our church is that we, we are pretty hospitable in this area. I actually think that most anybody who came into, the, into our community would be extended grace. And uh, I think our church has been like that for a long time and it makes me encouraged to be a part of a community like that. Um, but as I read through these parables, um, one of the things that stuck out to me that I've never really noticed before, I've wondered about this, is that Jesus, why does he tell three stories? Why not just one to make this point? The story of a lost sheep, then a shepherd goes out to find it and celebrates when he does, a lost coin, a woman searches her house and celebrates when she finds a coin in this lost son, of course. And um, began to think about repentance, which we've been talking about here at the church. And um, does Jesus welcome only repentant sinners or all sinners? The more I thought about it, I think he welcomes all sinners, but the only ones who come to him are the repentant ones. The other ones don't come. And so repentance is a part of the welcome that we receive from God. God doesn't receive unrepentant people because, again, they don't come to him. They're just, they want nothing to do with him. And it strikes me, though, that repentance is a part of these parables, certainly the third parable, the lost son. He, the father doesn't go out and drag him home like the shepherd and the, the woman do with the sheep and the coin because the son wouldn't come home unless he's ready. It's, there's no point. But when the son does come home, the father welcomes him. And so repentance is a part of what Jesus is teaching us here, that yes, to be welcomed by God, you have to repent. You have to turn your life and come back to him. But in the scope of the whole three parables, repentance is actually kind of a minor note. The major note, which, which rings through all three parables, and this is why Jesus, I think, is such a brilliant storyteller, is the, sto is the note of God's grace and love. Because in the first two, I mean, the, the coin and the sheep can't repent, they're just mindless things. So what's emphasized is the pursuit of the father of what's lost, which emphasizes God's love and God's grace. He goes to great lengths to find what's lost. And the father in the third parable he doesn't go out and find the son because, again, what's the point? The son won't come home until he's ready, but the father is welcome, ready to welcome him home the moment he turns back towards home in a lavish way and celebrates beyond what we would even expect. And so, again, though repentance is a part of it, really the major point of these parables is to emphasize three times so that we get it, that God is a God, a God's heart of love and grace who pursues us to the end. Repentance is necessary, but it's not the main point of the story. Uh, and so we have to leave just amazed again at the, the depth of God's love and grace towards us. The whole point of telling these stories, of course, is to a religious community represented by the older son in the, in the, in the third parable, who, whose hearts are so unlike God's heart 
that they, they do not welcome those who come back to God, who they consider to be unwelcomable, if that's a word. Um, and that's a, the question that we have to be left with. Are we the kind of community that welcomes and eats with sinners who are making their way back to God? I think that we are. Um, I praise God that we are by his grace. We always could do a better job of that. I have to keep asking myself that question. Um, but I, I think the more we focus on the grace and love of God towards us, people who don't deserve to be with him, the more we become a people, a community marked by grace and love, who welcome others who don't deserve to be with him. Um, I really encourage you to reflect on these parables today and see what God teaches you. Um, pray for us as we're finishing up uh, tomorrow and coming home with the work that we have to do here grateful for this community and looking forward to being with you in worship on Sunday. Wherever you are, whether it's in the Redwoods or not, I pray that you would sense God's, uh, the Father's uh, love and presence with you, the, the grace of Christ and uh, the community of the Spirit that we share uh, with one another and with God. Peace.